Hello everyone, in today's Extend Script Quick Tip tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to add effects inside of Adobe Premiere. Now this includes adding any effect that's built into the program, as well as adjusting any of the properties or parameters within it. So today we're just going to be taking this clip here and creating a script that applies a simple mosaic effect and then goes in and sets the custom number of vertical and horizontal blocks for us. And this entire code base is about 20 lines of code, very simple, yet very effective for Premiere. So let's go ahead and get started by opening a new JavaScript file and just zooming in here a little bit so we can see better. So to make things very simple for today, we're just going to have one clip in our Premiere timeline, and it's going to be on Video Track 1, and it's just going to be the only clip so we can reference Video Track 1 and the first video on it. So to get started in Premiere, we'll go ahead and create a variable for our project and call it project. And we'll set this equal to our app.project like usual. Then we'll have a variable for our sequence that we're inside of, which is our its bananas loop, which contains our footage. This is going to be equal to our project and the active sequence. The reason we want it to be the active sequence is like in After Effects scripting, we're going to assume they have it selected from the start. And then we also need a variable to represent all of these tracks here. We need to go down each level until we can get to this footage here. So we start at the project, go down to the sequence here, and now we need to go to the video tracks and the individual clips on the track. So I'll create a variable called tracks, and I'll set this equal to my sequence and all of the video tracks on it. These are just some generic variables we usually use when doing Premiere scripting because we'll always need access to a project, almost always need access to a sequence or composition, and then oftentimes we'll also need access to tracks. After that, I'm going to create a variable called clip. Now the difference between a clip and a track will be explained shortly, but essentially a track is an entire section that can contain multiple clips, and a clip is the individual footage on a track. So here I have video track one, two, and three, but I have just one video clip on all of the tracks combined. So we're gonna be using this clip variable to basically get this piece of footage on our timeline, and we're going to use that clip to apply the effect. Before we do that though, we need to do something called enable QE. So if we type in app.enable Q, capital E, and then it's a method, so we need to have some parentheses. What this is, is an internal Premiere Pro sort of scripting kit that they use to basically, from what I can ascertain, is to start developing a very succinct and efficient uh, scripting guide and process for Premiere. So basically we can use this as well inside of our Premiere scripts to do a lot of things you didn't think were possible, such as, well, today adding effects. So this basically just opens up a whole lot of functionality that will allow you to do things that uh, you can't with traditional Premiere scripting. And I do believe the minimum version is in CC 2017, but I could be wrong on that. So back to our clip, we need to reference this clip. Now we're gonna get into some custom functions that are built into QE. So what we want to do is first grab our QE variable. We now have a sort of global variable called QE. It's sort of like our app, and we can use this uh, to sort of go down the line and apply functions to our clip. So inside of QE, I'm now going to refer to our project. I'm going to again get the active sequence, and this one is a method because it needs to go through and search. So again, we need to make sure we have the sequence selected. And then we're going to get the video track at some index. Well, in our case, we have one, two, three video tracks. So I need to reference the first video track where my actual clip is. Or excuse me, I need to reference the zeroth because it starts at zero. And then finally, I can say get item at zero as well, which will reference the very first clip within this video track. So to briefly overview what this all this means is we start off looking at the QE object that we just enabled. We're gonna grab our current project we're in, grab the active sequence, because we assume they've selected it. Then we're going to use a function that looks at all of the video tracks and gets us either the first one, the second one, whatever we ask it. So we're gonna get the first video track right here where our clip is. And then lastly, we can use the built-in QE function called get item at, which will get the item at that index. Basically, in this case, the first item or the zeroth index. So just to prove that this is working, I'm gonna grab my clip and alert the name. So as you can see, I'm now getting its bananas loop.mp4. That means we are successfully getting access to our clip. 
So now we can do the simplest task and that is to apply our effect we want. It's very simple. You don't need to use any special match names yet. They might uh, update this in the future, but as of now, you can just scroll through, look at your video effects and literally just type in the name of it and apply it. So to do this, we're going to grab our clip and we're going to add a video effect. And this method will allow us to add, well, a video effect, uh, just as it says in this folder here. Inside of this method, I'm going to grab my QE, the project, and I'm going to get video effect by name. And inside of double quotes inside of here is where we can put in our effect for our video. And we just have to put in the name and it's going to recognize it. So again, since we're going to just do like a mosaic, we can just type in mosaic and let's try that. So now we just like that have already applied our effect inside of Premiere. We could call it good there, but now I wanna show you how you can go in and adjust these uh, properties so that way you can customize your effect and that will sort of lead you on the path to be able to start applying keyframes and other things. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do is how to adjust these properties. So to get started, I need to get a variable. Um, I need to basically get all these effects in here so I can loop through check if any of them are the mosaic effect, and if they are, then we can go in and change the values. But I want to assume that the user could have effects in any order. They could have mosaic in the first position, the 10th position, it needs to work for anything. So I'm going to create a variable called components, which if you didn't know in Premiere is the way of saying effects. I'm gonna set this equal to our clip.components. And I've gone ahead and said components equals our clip.components, which in this case, if I try and get the value, it's going to give me undefined. Why might this be? Well, there's sort of a bizarre relationship between native Premiere scripting right now and QE in that you'll basically need to have a separate set of variables for QE and a separate set of variables for native scripting. Because if I just use this clip, this is referring to sort of a QE specific uh, item. And now I need to refer to the native scripting version of the clip. So I actually need to go back up even further and I need to grab our main track and I'm gonna set this equal to all of our tracks and the first one, which we previously did here. This is again, just going to reference our first video track. And then I'll have a variable called clips, which will have a containment of all of the clips within this first video track. So I'll set this equal to main track dot clips. And then finally, I'll make another variable for what's now gonna be our new main clip. So I'll just call it main clip. And we'll set it to the very first clip, uh, which we assume there's only one in this case. Now, if we take our main clip and use those components, we should be able to now display some information. As you can see, we're now getting an object component collection, which is basically uh, all of the effects inside of here from motion to opacity to now mosaic. So now we need to go through and loop through all of these. So I'll create a for loop and we're going to start at index i, so i is equal to zero. And for i is less than our components. And for components, we need to use num items rather than the length of it. And then we'll increment i by one. Then we're going to bring in an if statement and each time we go through, we're gonna check the display name or the name of the current effect applied. So the display name is how we get it in scripting and it's just basically the actual name, which in this case you'd see would be levels. So I'm gonna check our components index i and the display name. If that's equal to what we're looking for, which is gonna be mosaic, then we want to alert preset found, as in we found the preset applied in here. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see the preset has been found, which means we've gone through, found the display name, name mosaic, and now we can make that our variable. So I'll create a variable called effect, and effect is now going to equal uh, our components index i. All right, so lastly, we just need to change the properties of our new effect variable. The easy way to do this is just to grab effect. And the way we actually do properties in Premiere is a little bit different. The index will start at zero usually, and you also need to use brackets rather than parentheses. I'll link to a useful guide created by Premiere OnScript, a useful YouTube channel for Premiere scripting. He has a 
compiled list of all of the match names, effect names, and property indices of every effect in Premiere. So in the case of Mosaic, the property we need, at least for the horizontal mosaic, is going to be property 0. And the property index for the vertical blocks is going to be property 1. Then we need to set both of their values. So we'll say set value. And inside of here, we'll just say whatever we want to set the values to. So let's say 100 and maybe 25. Let's go ahead and we run it. You can see we're going to get an error. This is because we actually need to have two parameters when we set a value in Premiere. The first one is sort of the actual value of it. And the second one, we just need to say true. And this is sort of just telling it, hey, we actually want to apply this effect or whatever. So now if we run it, we're still getting an error because I'm silly. Uh, it's actually properties, not property, because it needs to be plural. So now if we run it, delete the mosaic here and run it, you can see we now get a mosaic effect with 100 horizontal blocks and 25 vertical blocks. And of course, like I said, you can go in, look at any of these effects and change it. So I can change mosaic to Lumetri color. And I can literally, instead of having the program do it for me, apply all the Lumetri colors I want, just like that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this ExtendScript quick tip tutorial for this week. I hope you enjoyed. This one was very beneficial for me when I figured it out because it opens up a lot of possibilities in Premiere Scripting. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. If you want more videos, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon to be notified of new uploads. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.